So hi folks, this ZWOC Star S50 took the world by storm as being one of the most user-friendly and uh, affordable smart telescopes on the market today. One major drawback, however, was that it has a small 2 megapixel camera sensor, which allows users to capture only a small portion of the night sky. Well, ZWO just released an update in their C-Star app called Framing, which allows you to frame objects in the night sky the way you want to frame them, and also capture a larger portion of the night sky. Well, is this feature really a game changer for the C-Star S50? And how does it stack up against the competition? Let's find out. I'm Wido Oelemans and you're watching Wido's Astro Forum. Smart telescopes like the C-Star S50 are all-in-one devices designed to make stargazing and astrophotography easy for beginners. They can be controlled wirelessly via an app on your smartphone or tablet. Simply choose a celestial object in the app you want to observe and the telescope will automatically locate, track and capture images of that object for you to enjoy on your smart device. Unlike more traditional setups, smart telescopes don't require extensive knowledge of astronomy or astrophotography and can be up and running in minutes. As such, they offer a hassle-free way to enjoy the night sky for absolute beginners. For those interested, I have made a couple of videos highlighting the differences between smart telescopes and more traditional higher-end astrophotography setups and you can find links to those videos in the description below. I first reviewed the ZWO C-Star in 2023 and I immediately saw its potential, especially given its affordable price range under $500, or if you live in Europe like me, about 700 euros due to import tax. It's one of the most budget-friendly smart telescopes for stargazing, even more so with the recent introduction of its younger brother, the C-Star S30, which I will review in an upcoming video. Now, C-Star telescopes use a technique called lucky imaging, where 10-second photos are captured and stacked, providing far better views of deep sky objects than what you might see through an eyepiece of a regular telescope. It's also more comfortable, allowing you to view images on your smart device from the warmth of your home, rather than peering through a traditional eyepiece on those cold winter nights. However, the C-STARS 2 megapixel camera sensor was a limitation compared to other smart telescopes like the Vespera 2 and the recently introduced Dwarf 3, which both feature 8 megapixel sensors. A larger camera sensor can capture bigger objects in a single frame, like the Andromeda Galaxy for instance, while the C-STAR S50 could only capture a portion of such large objects. At least until now. And this brings us to the main focus of this video. So one advantage of smart telescopes like the C-Star S50 is that while the hardware stays the same, the app's functionality keeps improving. Since its release, ZWO has rolled out several incremental updates to the already user-friendly C-Star app. These updates introduce features like time-lapse creation, a solar system mode with up to four times digital zoom, and the ability to download individual photos for manual processing alongside the automatically stacked images. However, none of these updates were huge game changers, at least in my opinion, until the recent one that introduces this new framing feature. I believe that this update could significantly influence your decision between buying a C-Star S50 or going for another smart telescope uh, that is available today. So let me show you how this feature works and why it might be such a big deal. Despite the many cloudy nights in the Netherlands this autumn, I did manage to find a 4 hour gap in the clouds giving me a good opportunity to test the C-Star S50's new framing feature. Now, if you have the C-Star app, you've probably already received that automatic update, which also updates the telescope's firmware. After updating it to version 2.2, I opened the app and noticed the new framing option in the Sky Atlas. I zoomed in on the Andromeda Galaxy, and to my surprise, the framing feature allowed me to rotate and magnify the field of view, giving you up to a four times larger view which comfortably fitted the Andromeda Galaxy, which is actually one of the bigger objects in the night sky that covers about six times the width of the moon's diameter. The ability to rotate the object is also a big improvement compared to the fixed 2 megapixel portrait sensor view we had before. 
After framing the Andromeda Galaxy to my satisfaction by using the rotate and magnification sliders, I tapped on Go2 and the seized RS50 slew to M31, performed its standard horizontal calibration and initialization procedures, and started imaging. The Seastar S50 with its 2 megapixel camera sensor started imaging the central part of the Andromeda Galaxy first. It then shifted slightly to capture other sections, automatically stitching the images together to create what is called a mosaic image of the night sky. The total integration time of the mosaic was around 1 hour and 25 minutes. However, due to poor weather, the Sea Star discarded many frames with clots or star trails, so it took me about 3 hours to capture that 1 hour and 25 minutes of usable data. While some users criticize this frame dropping feature, I actually see it as an advantage as it ensures only the best frames are kept for a cleaner final image. After finishing Andromeda, I continued by imaging the Orion Nebula, but unfortunately clouds rolled in after just 20 minutes, forcing me to cancel that particular session. This highlights another perk of smart telescopes. You can quickly set up the telescope and start imaging within minutes, and also shut down very fast and take the telescope back inside when the weather suddenly changes, which happens a lot, at least here in the Netherlands it does, especially in autumn and winter. Here are the automatically stacked pictures by the Seastar S50. And here are images I processed using the stacked FITS files of the Seastar S50 and I edited them using PixInsight. I also saved all individual FITS files from uh, the mosaic of the Andromeda Galaxy, but with over 500 individual photos, it would have taken me a long time to select the best ones and recreate that particular mosaic. So instead, I just worked with the stacked FITS file to edit it and create these final images. Do you think it's a game changer? Well, let me know your thoughts in the comment section and let me also give you my personal opinion and let me also get into how this compares to other smart telescopes that are on the market today. Well, first off, yes, I, I do think this is a real game changer. The ability to rotate and expand your view to create a mosaic of deep sky objects up to six times the width of the moon is actually fantastic. And by rotating the image, you are no longer stuck with the fixed portrait view of the Seastar S50 like before. Is this a feature perfect? I would say no. The Seastar S50's 2 megapixel sensor is still limited in the ability to capture large objects in one single image. As demonstrated in one of my other reviews, smart telescopes like the Vaonis Vespera 2 has an 8.3 megapixel Sony IMX585 sensor, and that larger camera sensor actually allows you to capture larger objects in one single shot, providing you with more integration time for the object you want to photograph, which increases the image quality in the end. But let's be honest, the Vespera 2 costs about two times more than the Seastar S50. So when comparing the Seastar S50 with this new feature to other smart telescopes in a more similar price range, we of course have the Dwarf 3 from Dwarf Lab, and that smart telescope does feature a larger 8.3 megapixel camera sensor, which can capture a larger part of the night sky, like the Andromeda Galaxy, in one single picture. But it does not yet have the option to rotate and frame objects, like I just showed you. Another advantage of the Seastar S50 is that it has a larger 15mm aperture compared to the Dwarf 3's 35mm aperture, or for that matter, the 30mm aperture of its younger sibling, the Seastar S30, which I will review in an upcoming video. Now, a bigger aperture means that the Seastar S50 gathers more light. And this results in brighter, higher resolution views of faint objects like galaxies and nebulae as compared to the other telescopes. I should note that the Seastar S30 works with the same Seastar app I just showed you, so this new framing feature is available for the Seastar S30 as well. 
In conclusion, I do think that the Seastar S50's new framing update really boosts the capability of the Seastar S50, making it a much more competitive telescope on the smart telescope market today. So let me know, what do you think of this new framing feature? Do you think it's a game changer? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and as always, I wish you clear skies. See you in the next video.